Caution. All garages are different. Watch this video all the way through and carefully read written instructions before installing. If you are unsure or uncomfortable with installing this product, contact a structural professional. Always test this mechanism using a live load. Never stand, allow children or pets to be under lifted object. Misuse or improper installation of this product can result in serious injury or death. Follow all safety rules and regulations of tools and ladders while installing this product. Wear safety glasses and protective gloves when installing this product. So uh, this is uh, Hoist the Top Simple Introduction, take one. Hi there, Carter Smith from Lang Originals. You're uh, watching this video because you're either considering or you have purchased a Hoist the Top Simple. Thanks for your purchase and uh, thank you for your consideration. So I thought I would just open up the box and just give you an idea of what's included inside uh, and then go over uh, some quick installation instructions today that you can watch at a glance and uh, hopefully it'll help you on your way to installing this product. So as you open the box, you'll notice you'll have a, a parts bag with all your parts. You'll have, your, have an installation uh, booklet instruction with all the specifications and everything else, kind of all the things we'll go over today. Your lifting strap, your lifting hooks, you'll have a black and a red. The red will be for uh, JK or for the TJ, CJ, and YJ, and the black will be for the JK models, both two door and four door. You'll have you'll have three pulleys. You'll have a double pulley. Let me take it out of the package here so you can see. You'll have a double pulley, and then you'll have two single pulleys. And then you'll have your lifting crank. And you have your wire cable. Now, all of these things, um, they may change slightly in appearance or color uh, due to manufacturing or some other processes that we might have. But everything basically here will be the same uh, and will be for the process, uh, the same for the process. So let's get right to it and uh, let's start some install and uh, get going. Now we're gonna go over the first part of the garage installation, um, prepping our two by six boards that are gonna hang on the wall and the ceiling. So these two by six boards are gonna hold, they're gonna hold the pulleys that the cable is gonna run through to be able to hang your top. So um, in our garage studio here, our studs are on 16 inch centers. In your garage, they may, be, uh, they may be on 24 inch centers, they may be on 16 inch centers. You need to determine that so you can know how uh, long to cut your two by six boards. So cut your boards to the appropriate length. For, for us, we're on 16 inch centers, so I've cut these at about 20 inches so that I have some nice overhang on each side. That way I don't have to worry about the board splitting when I put in my, um, my screws that hold it onto the wall. And I've marked these boards at uh, 16 inches on center here in the middle so that I know exactly where to put those screws. And I've also drilled some small uh, holes with a small bit so that um, a pilot hole just so that those, uh, those screws can go in down nice and easy. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna measure for the double pulley. And to do that, I'm just gonna measure the center of my board, which for this 20 inch board is gonna be 10 inches. And I'm just gonna make a mark so that I know what the center is. And then I'm gonna place the, the double pulley here on uh, right on center. I'm gonna mark the holes just in case I lose my spot. I can remember. And then I'm going to remove, I'm actually going to remove these two wheels um, just because it makes it a lot easier to screw in, uh, screw in the pulley onto the board. In order to do that, I've got to remove one of these spring clips, which can be a little bit tedious, but it works well if you have the right tool. And I, I found a pair of needle nose pliers is the best way to remove those. 
Before they do that though, I wanna make sure I wear my safety glasses because you never know these little springs could flip. So I just put it right down inside of there and just pull off that spring clip. I put that aside because I'm gonna to have to put that right back on. I'm gonna remove the axle. And you'll notice on the back side here, there's welding marks and then there's little tabs. Those little tabs help keep the, uh, they help keep the pulley on the board nicely and it's uh, kind of a little, uh, something that kind of crushes down into the board and it makes it a little more secure. So those are there on purpose. I'm gonna put those in place. Then I'm gonna use four of the screws that are provided in your parts bag to put this on right in the dead middle of the board. Okay, that's on and ready to go. So the, those little tabs have just crushed right down into the board and it's holding in place very, very solid. Okay, so the next two, the next two pulleys are gonna go on. The next one is gonna go right on dead center just like we did with the double. So I'm going to measure again. Again, this being a 20 inch board, I'm going to measure here dead center at 10 inches. And then I'm going to put this on exactly the same way. I'm going to remove the, I'm going to remove the, the wheel and the pulley. And I'm going to screw this on. Now the third, the third pulley wheel is going to be slightly different. The only difference is, is that we're going to put it on one inch left of center. And that allows the cable um, from, the, uh, from the crank unit, when we put it on the wall, it'll allow the cable to run up by it uh, without any interference at all. So that's really the only variance on this, is that this third pulley needs to be over one inch. So I'm gonna measure again. And instead of doing it the 10 inch mark, I'm gonna do it the nine. So I'll just mark here the nine inch. All right, well I'm gonna get all these screwed on and then we'll be ready to install those into the ceiling and on the wall. Okay, so it's time to install our first board. Uh, the first one we're gonna install is gonna be on the wall and that's where the crank unit's gonna go. So I got one of my pre-cut uh, boards here. And as I mentioned before, our, our studio walls here are on 16 inches. And so I'm gonna install this, uh, I'm gonna install this here on this wall. And our recommendation is to do it about 50 inches. So I'm just gonna measure up here. And this isn't a hard, fast me measurement. I mean, you can change this. In fact, I'm a little taller, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put mine at about 55 inches, just cause I, you know, I like to, to work the handle at about that, about that size. So I'm gonna line this up here. I'm just gonna eyeball it level and make sure, and for those of you that really like everything to be super square, feel free to put a level on there, but it's not absolutely necessary. This just needs to be kind of nice and eyeball straight. And then I'm gonna screw each one of these to the wall. Before we hang our crank on the wall, we have to just disassemble the, uh, the spool. And so again, I'm gonna take my, uh, my 9 16th wrench that I, that I used earlier and a crescent wrench on the other side. And I'm just gonna remove this axle. This is a nylock uh, nut again on this side. So I'm gonna put that aside. Okay, now inside here, there's a, there's a little floating axle, so you wanna just make sure that that doesn't fall out. And then, uh, and then we're ready to hang that unit. It's uh, a lot easier to access 
the back when you, uh, when you remove that axle and you're ready to hang it on the wall. Okay, so now let's uh, install our crank uh, here onto the wall. So first I'm gonna mark the holes. So your correct orientation is your worm drive is gonna be on the bottom right hand side. And so this oval, this oval hole is gonna be on the top. So uh, one thing I wanna make sure to do here is I know that my cable is gonna go up the, up the wall here and um, go with our pulleys in the ceiling. So I wanna make sure that this is in the center of the studs on the top of the ceiling. And, and uh, then I'm gonna make some marks here with my pencil. I'm gonna put in this, uh, this oval hole and then I'm gonna put, it, um, put a circle on the bottom hole here. And then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna drill some pilot holes. And I'm going to drill the second hole on the bottom of the oval hole just so that uh, there's no interference with the hardware. Then using the two three inch lag screws that you, ha that you have in your parts bag and the washer, the flat washer, I'm going to put these up on. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use my impact, uh, my trusty impact wrench here to put these on because it, uh, the socket will take a little longer and I think this will go fast. So. I'm not going to over tighten it too much until I get it uh, all positioned here. Again, I want to make sure this is nice and square and so that the cables go right straight up into the ceiling and, and we're, ready to, uh, we're ready to put the spool back in and then uh, do the, steel, the ceiling installation. Um, we're going to install first in the top corner up here, we're going to install this double pulley. And um, now this double pulley can be installed in two ways. Um, you can install it this way if your studs happen to line up right, um, or, in the, or in this case, it's gonna line up a little better for us that we do it on the ceiling. Either way is okay. Um, uh, it's just whatever lines up best for your situation. And what I wanna make sure is, now we've, we've already pre-installed all of these things, so it should be Everything should be lined up nice, but, but the, the, pertinent, the most important thing here is that we want to make sure that the cables from, the, from our, our unit down here come up nice and straight and, and come in contact first with the, with the double pulley. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to take our, I've pre-installed the, uh, the long uh, screws here, these decking screws. And I'm going to go ahead and just drive these up into the ceiling in place. And then, uh, okay. Now let's install the, the second board on the ceiling, uh, the first single pulley. And um, this uh, measurement is the one that is less critical. Um, it's gonna be custom to your garage. So the distance from the first uh, double pulley that we just, or the double pulley that we just installed 
The measurement from here to where we're gonna install this first one, it's kind of up to you in your garage. If you have something in the way, or if you have a, a constraint or something like that, then you can kind of customize this distance. Um, we're here just in our, in our studio garage. We're, we're doing uh, about, uh, about 55 inches is what we're doing here. The only constraint you're gonna run into is that you have about 20 feet of cable. So you need to keep that in mind if you're gonna do something really long, your, your only constraint is gonna be that you're gonna have about uh, 20 to 23 feet of cable. So that being said, I'm gonna hang this up here. And again, we have our just our pre, our pre ready to go installation here. I got my screws in here so I can put them in nice and easy, hopefully. Make sure this is nice and straight on the wall or on the ceiling. I'm just gonna. Okay, great. And we're ready to put in our final pulley and. Okay, so we're ready to hang our final pulley. Now, just as a reminder, this is the pulley that we uh, put as an offset. It's one inch to the left and so as we hang it on the ceiling, we're gonna make sure that that stays on the left side. And um, uh, the last measurement wasn't, uh, it, it, that one you could customize. This one, this one needs to be pretty right on. 34 inches is um, the distance uh, that we think it's, it's very best to put. So you're gonna measure 34 inches from the ceiling, or from the first pulley, the, uh, the first single pulley here. So that's, the 34 inches is where the pulley is going to hang, so at its, at its center. So I'm, I'm going to place a mark here with my pencil. And I'm going to hold up, making sure again that this is on the left side. I'm going to make sure that the center of the 2x6 two by, two by there. And then I'm just going to I'm just gonna place a little mark there so I know right where exactly where that's gonna go. Again, I got my pre-drilled holes. Ready to put this up. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I measured out my cable, and what I've done is I've made uh, a long side, which is a 20 foot, 23 feet, and I've made the short side, which is 20 feet. So you have 43 feet of total cable, and I put uh, a piece of electrician's tape here, just right here in the middle, to, to let me know that uh, this side is 23 feet, and this side is 20 feet. And then uh, as kind of a, a dummy thing for just for me, cause I'll lose track. I actually put a little piece of tape here with the word long on it. So I remember that this side is the long side. This is kind of the, this is kind of the, the technical part of this. You gotta make sure that this is, that these get on the right side. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through and we'll have to get a little close up on this so that you can see for sure how this, this happens. This is not too bad, but, so you have to go in to one side like this, and then I'm gonna pull this all the way through right to my, right to my piece of black electrician's tape. Right there. Now I know that the gear side um, is where I want my long cable to be wrapped up on and the non-gear side is where I want to have my short cable on. So I'm going to come back through again in this second hole. I'm going to come back through here, loop around. And now I'm gonna put the other side through. I'm just gonna lace it through on the other side. 
So then I'll have my long side on the gear side and the short side on the non-gear side. And then that will be consistent with what we've done on the ceiling with our offsetted pulley. So I'm just gonna put this back through on this side. Okay, all right, great. Now, I don't really need that, so I can, I can just take that off and discard that. But as far as for my, for my memory now, we got it in the right, we got everything on the right side and it's ready to go. So it makes just like a little loop shape and it goes through on a cross right there. And uh, we will be ready to wind this up, but we're not gonna quite wind it up yet because we're gonna wanna uh, lace it through our pulleys first before we start to crank it down. All right, so um, this part should be really easy. The only thing you have to make sure to keep track of is to make sure that you keep your wire uh, straight and so they don't get crossed on the way up. So again, the gear side, which is our long, which is our long cable, we're gonna just thread, through, thread this through on the double pulley. So I'm gonna put this up here. Pull that through. It's nice to have the little mark of tape there, just, you know, in case this moves a little bit, you can just make sure that gets aligned. And then the second one here, which is the non-gear side, is going to go up here on what would be the left side. Make sure these are nice and straight. You can see that those, they run parallel to each other without crossing, you know you're in good shape. Okay, so we're ready to thread our cable through the single pulleys. So I'm just gonna make sure that, again, that I'm keeping the long and the short one uh, organized here in my hands. So the short one, which is over, which is over here on the non-gear side, that's going to be the, the, the short is going to be the first cable to go through the first pulley. All right, great. And the second cable, uh, which is the, the longer cable or the 23 foot cable, is going to go through our second pulley which has been offset to the left one inch. And it should. Now we see why the offset was important so that this cable is able to run past this uh, first cable or this first pulley without any interference at all. So everything looks good. Everything looks nice and straight. It's uh, straight up and down from the power or from the crank unit up to the ceiling. And we're ready to install our uh, lifting frame and then we'll be ready to lift our top. So what we need to do is we need to put in our elevator bolts. Um, and this can be a little bit kind of a little bit tedious. Now you'll have to figure forgive us today because we have our top uh, off our Jeep. It's a little easier for, for us to show you how, how it's supposed to work. We have right here is a four-door JK hoisted or a four-door JK top, and uh, so we're going to use the the front hole on the uh, for the elevator bolt for the lifting. So this is much easier with a second person, but I I'm going to try and do this the best I can uh, by myself. So the procedure is I'm going to put the elevator bolt underneath and just slide it in the first hole here. All right, and I can even put it, put it back down. I only needed to lift it just a little bit. I'm gonna put on the washer. And then the nut. Nice. I'm gonna tighten that down with 
my crescent wrench. This doesn't have to be so tight that you know it holds on the world. It's just it's got to be able to be just snug. There we go. Okay, no grunting. All right. So next, we're ready to go uh, and put on our uh, our lifting hook and our lifting strap. Okay, for this part of it. We're gonna we're gonna put on the strap on the front end here, or the 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 longer cable, and then we're gonna put the hook on the rear side. So um, this top happens to be uh, for the four door JK. So I'm gonna be using the um, the black coated hook. If you have a TJ or a YJ or a CJ, um, you'll be using the other hook, which is the color red. So the two-door and the four-door JK will be working with this black one. You'll also need, you'll also need your wire clamps from your parts bag and your two thimbles. So I have this special tool here, a nut driver. It's a nine millimeter. And this is the best tool I've found to put on these, uh, put on these small little nuts on these, on these wire clamps. Um, if you don't have it, a little deep well nine millimeter socket will work just fine. But this is my, kind of my favorite tool to use for this one. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put the thimble onto the strap here. And I found that it's, if you fold this, if you fold this uh, piece of fabric here, or this strap, that it'll fit very nicely under the under the thimble. And I like to put these on first. And that way I don't have to take the I don't have to take the uh, little tiny nuts off and worried about losing them or anything. I'm gonna slide this in. And then I'm gonna put I'm just gonna slide each one of these nuts. Uh, wire cable nuts down one and two and three all right so the first one that I want to tighten is I want to tighten this uh, I want to tighten this top one and that keeps everything in place for a minute and this this rounded edge right here is what you want on the short end. And this is important because this is the strongest way to hold this together. So you're gonna want the, again, the rounded edge on the short side. And then I'm gonna tighten this up. And I'm not gonna tighten it super tight because we may have to do some adjusting. So I'm gonna tighten this one down just kind of snug. And then the second what I'm going to do is the one down here, right here at the very bottom of the thimble. I'm going to put that pretty close to the thimble, and I want to make sure that this, this wire uh, nut is going exactly the same way. So I've got the hooked end on this side. I'm going to make sure all three of those are exactly the same, going the same direction. Again, I'm just going to tighten this down kind of snug. Okay, the third one right here. Just kind of equidistant there. All right, that strap is on. Now let's move to the back and do the same procedure with the lifting hook. I'm going to put the thimble on first, or oh, I'm going to put the uh, wire nuts on first. through here, perfect. Okay. Again, that rounded end is gonna be on the short side Tighten that up. This one 
getting all the way down to the top of the thimble. My, my thimble slipped down, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. Make sure that's going the same direction as the one above. Perfect. Now we're ready to put these on to our top and after tightening these down really tight and making sure that everything balances properly, we'll be able to lift. So let's put the strap on on the first side to start with. So I just want to make sure the strap is straight coming down. And then uh, so it, it, as if your top was uh, sitting on top of your Jeep, what you'd have to do is just lift this edge just a little bit. And then all you have to do is just tuck, tuck this un under far enough. You can even put, go back down on it there. All you have to do is be able to have it down enough that you can put your uh, grommet strap over the top of the, the stud that's sticking out here a little bit. And then your wing nut will go right down on top. And that grommet will act as a nice washer. This doesn't have to be super tight. It can just be a nice finger tight. I'll pull the, I'll just lift this ever so slightly and then pull the slack out so this is nice and tight. I'll do that same procedure on the other side as well. The first time you use this, the strap might be a little bit tight, but as your top hangs in the air, um, it, this will eventually loosen up a little bit. Okay, let's uh, put the lifting hook in between the top and the back of your window here. So I'm going to lift the top. The nice thing about this is that you can you can have your top, uh, you can lift your top with your window, rear window open, or if you're kind of in a space crunch, you can close it and it'll close just fine as well. So I'm just gonna slip this hook in the back. And what I like to do is I like to line up this rear hook with this, uh, with this center raised panel right here. That's pretty much the dead center of the top. And if I know if it's sitting right there, it's probably gonna lift about right. And if the top is slightly askew when I start to lift it, I know I can just move my hook ever so slightly one way to the other depending on which way it's leaning. Now your top, uh, your rear window will close right nicely over this uh, patented bend hook and you're ready to lift. Top tip, removing the handle and U-shaped bracket, you can use a cordless drill to raise and lower the mechanism effectively and reinstalling the nylock nut tightly. We are using a half-inch drive made from a drill chuck and an 18 millimeter socket. Okay, so before we go to lift the top in the air, I want to do one, one more check. I want to make sure that um, I tighten these down very snug. I just want to make sure that these are all good and tight. Before we start, I'm going to do a hardware check, make sure everything's good before I start lifting anything. Okay, 
And I just want to make sure that my wing nuts are good. Those look like they're in great shape. Hooks on nice. Okay, and we're ready to lift. Um, one of the things that I like to do, um, your handle will work great. It's a, it's a little slower, um, and it's that way on purpose for safety reasons. But if you want to speed it up just a little bit, I like to use a, a 19 millimeter uh, deep well socket on my cordless wrench or on my cordless drill. Now as I'm raising it, I can tell already that one side is lifting that it's a little bit, uh, a little bit off center. So this is, this is an okay thing, this is normal, and this is what we wanna do. We wanna be able to look at this and see what's happening. So we're gonna have to make it a readjustment and tighten the front end of the, of the lifting strap. So I'm gonna go back down again. We're going to readjust. You may have to do this two or three times to get it just right, but once you once you finish the adjustment, you should never have to adjust again um, unless this strap stretches. But even if it does stretch a little bit, it'll only stretch you know a minute amount over over quite a bit bit of time. So. We're just gonna make, we're just gonna, let's see, let's listen to this just a tiny bit more. and tight. It's a little bit tedious, but if uh, you have a helper, it helps a lot. You want to make sure you get your... I'm going to tighten that nice and tight. And again, the same procedure, the second one here. I'm going to make sure that that looped end goes on the correct side. Make sure these are nice and snug, and we'll hope we got it right this time. Okay. like the way that it lifted this time. It looks like it's really good. Now, one thing that I might improve just a little bit, as you can tell, it's tilting just a little bit to this side. And if I was feeling really picky, I could stop and I could put it back down again and move this hook over this way, just about a quarter of an inch. And this would balance out perfectly. But if I'm in kind of a hurry and I want to, I want to get going for the evening, this is certainly safe and it's good enough to hang up in your ceiling and uh, you'll be in great shape. We want to thank you for purchasing or considering purchasing the Hoist Atop Simple. We think it's a great product. We use it ourselves, and we really think it is the simplest way to lift your top. And um, we, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to uh, call us at our toll-free number, and we'll be happy to help you in any way we can. Thank you very much for your consideration.